So this is just a follow-up to the video on space-filling fractals. I just want to say a little bit about the fractal dimension. So how we can measure the fractal dimension of a self-similar fractal. I'd just like to talk about something called the fractal dimension. I want to give you some idea, at least intuitively, of what it is. When we looked at a, the Sapinski triangle, and one way, we can actually draw the Sapinski triangle like this. So we start with the triangle, and then we draw another triangle, an upside down triangle in it, and then that gives us three new triangles, and we rep repeat this process. So this is our kind of iterative function. So we can get a Sapinski triangle in different ways. In this case, we're kind of explicitly drawing it, whereas with our chaos game, we were filling it in using randomness. So this is a Sapinski triangle to depth, how many times have I iterated it? No, one, two, three, I think. So this would be depth three. And we can continue this process forever. And of course, this triangle here is the same as this triangle here. And that's what's known as fractal self-similarity. Now, what I want to ask is, what is the dimensionality of this abstract mathematical object? So if we said that a line has to mention 1 and a plane has to mention 2, what dimension does this have? Now we might say, well, it has dimension 2, it's on a plane, but that's not, that's not really very useful. So what Mandelbrot kind of came up with, with was this idea of um, fractal dimension. And if we look at this, as we saw in the Sapinski triangle that we generated with the... Um, space-filling fractal, it kind of fills a space. It fills a two-dimensional plane, but it doesn't fill it entirely. So what we can kind of think of is say, well, it's not really a plane, and it's, not, it's somewhere in between a line and a plane. And we can kind of characterize its frac fract fractalness by how much it fills the plane in this case. So we call that its fractal dimension, and it has a fractal dimension of 1.58 approximately. It's um, log 3 over log 2, so it's not exactly 1.58. So 1.58 is somewhere between 2 and 1, and we kind of intuitively get that, because the way it fills the space, remember we repeat this over and over, it's not completely filling it, if you see what I mean. It's filling it 1.58 rather than 2 if it was completely filled. Now, let me, I just want to go over how we calculate the fractal dimension. And formally then, the fractal dimension is calculated as a ratio of two things. The first is the, so we take the log of what's called the, the essentially the number of pieces that we're breaking the thing into. So we'll call that num p. When we divide that by what's called the magnification factor. And I really need to explain this and show some examples, otherwise it kind of doesn't make a lot of sense. And this is where the kind of self-similarity of a fractal comes in. So if we take a line, we can break that into as many pieces as we want. Um, so let's just break it into two pieces. And this point, so when we break it into two points, we get two self-similar pieces. They're identical in similarity to the whole line. So that's the number of pieces we break it into. And then the magnification factor is how, if we were to kind of increase this, inflate this in size, how much would we have to do so to get the original line back? And it's two. So then that gives us, if we want to compute the fractal dimension of this, We'll say that for two pieces, then it would be log two over log two. So two self-similar pieces have a magnification factor of two. Now for a line, it's always the case that no matter how many self-similar pieces we break it into, so we break it into four pieces, that original piece kind of got to multiply it by four or magnify it by four to get the original line. So if we break it into N pieces, 
then we have to magnify it by n to get the original line back. So we say that the fractal dimension, of course these are the same terms, is 1. And a line has a dimension 1, which is very convenient. So let's look at a square or a plane. If we start with a plane and we say, all right, we'll break it into self-similar pieces. And of course, there's only certain ways we can do that. We can't split it in half. Those pieces are not self-similar. The first way we can do that is we break it into four pieces. So in four pieces, then how we get four, we get four bits and how much do we have to magnify those pieces to get the original square. Well, each point, each kind of um, side needs to be magnified by two, right? We need to double each of these sides. So for four pieces, we need to magnify it by two. So we get log four over log two. Now we're not trying to compute the um, fractal dimension in order to com no. In order to compute the fractal dimension, we need to do it generally to say, well, for any number of um, piece, self-similar pieces we divide it into, what is the magnification factor and work out that ratio. So let's just, well, let's just have another look for explicitly for the case where we break it into, we break each of these into two again. Now, relative to the original image, what we've done is we've broken the square into 16 pieces. And then for each of these pieces, how much do we have to magnify it to get the original square back? Well, each side has got to be magnified four times. So you see where we're going with this. So what would we say in general with regards to a square? Well, if you look at the relationship between these two things, this is actually the square root of this, which makes sense because however many, our multiplication factor is always gonna be effectively the number of squares on one side. Therefore, the total number of squares is gonna be the square of that. So we can then compute the fractal dimension by saying uh, that this is Let's say this is n squared and this is n. And with logarith logarithmic manipulation, we can say that that is 2 log n over log n. And of course, these cancel out because this is the same as saying 2 times log n over log n. And that goes away because that's 1. So we get the value 2. So the dimensionality, the fractal dimensionality of a plane is two. So that's how we compute the fractal dimensionality of a plane. So what about the Sapinski triangle? How do we actually work that one out? Well, let's draw the Sapinski triangle again. And we don't have to go too far. And draw it quite crudely. So what, when we break it, when we create the self-similarity. How many pieces do we break it into? Well, in that first step, we take the triangle and we've broken it into three more triangles, three separate self-similar pieces. So there's three self-similar pieces. And what is the magnification factor for each piece? Well, if you look at this triangle, each of its sides has been reduced by two. It's been halved. So we'd multiply this triangle side by two and we'd get, get the original triangle back. So the magnification factor is two. So that gives us 1.58, which is the fractal dimension of the Sipinski triangle. Okay, well, I just wanted to mention that because most people have heard of fractals and they've seen Mandelbrot set and things like that but they've probably not heard of they might not have heard of fractal dimension of course if you have then you know I'm teaching grandma to suck eggs right but that's also where this term fractal comes from fractional 
because we're talking about fractional dimensions of things. Well, there you go. I hope that was uh, interesting to watch or useful, and uh, thanks for watching.